14 years with a story like that? I'll bring you the alien, the creature, the being. somebody dies? No, they don't. There's so many things we haven't done. Children are the hope of your species, not the danger. Human children, not your alien seed. How long do you think it lasts without me to take care of you? Is that what you do? The Wisconsin thing? Well, that was 15 years ago. <sighs> the Army Corps of Engineers was checking out a dam in the lake near the crash site, and they found some kind of fragment. Somebody remembered and bucked the thing over to us. Oh, these are great shots. I mean, I'm not prejudiced or anything, but your stuff's definitely the best. It's not my stuff. Well, I know. Paul Forrester's Irish period. <laughs> what is it? Wait a minute. What, something in the painting? You see that star? A very bright one? Yeah. That's home. What? You know when we sit at night looking at the stars and you ask me where I'm from and I point up to the sky and say there? That's there? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's impossible, Dad. Uh, that has to be coincidence. Coincidence? Scott, there isn't a word in any language on this planet that can describe how many stars there are in the sky. That this artist should pick this particular star. Then what does it mean? K-I. Dad, are you, uh, nervous? Been too much air on you. Why should I be nervous? <laughs> no, I'm just gonna read it. I'm a pilot, Scott. I have flown millions of miles and light years through galaxies that these people never even dreamed of. <laughs> what was that? They just took up the wheels, Dad. Uh, you see, my, um, my spacecraft didn't have wheels. Right, right. So what do you think? 
I mean, here we are on a plane flying to Albuquerque on Paul Forrester's fee to meet some guy named uh, Geffner, right? And all we've got to go on is that he owned the painting. That's not all. Well, what else? K-I. Yeah. Haven't you noticed? K is the first letter after J, and I is the first letter after H. Jenny Hayden? Do you think it could be? I hope so. Geffner? Just a second. Yeah? Are you Wayne Geffner? That's right. Maybe you could help me. I need some information about a yeah, painting. What kind of painting? Well, I bought this in a gallery up north. Thought maybe you could uh, tell me who painted it. Sorry. Well, it's got these initials K.I. Mister, I never saw the painting before. You better get out of the way before something falls on you. The foreman said he lived on Citrus. There's his truck. Dad, if this was a trap, the guy back there wouldn't have told you to take a hike. It may be a more clever trap. We're inside. Look, until I see if there's something for us to find, and if Fox didn't leave it for us, I want you to stay out of sight. nothing to say. But I just have to talk to you. How many to times I gotta say it? I never saw the picture. Well, then how is it you have one exactly like it hanging in your bedroom? Mr. Geffner. You got some kind of nerve sneaking around here. What is it, Wayne? Nothing. Mr. Geffner, if you just let me explain. Buddy, if you ain't out of here in 10 seconds, you'll explain to Wayne, the cops. stop it! Stop it! Let him up! Oh, he didn't mean anything by it. Just that he has a terrible temper. My name is Phyllis Geffner. I'm Paul Forrester. Go ahead, Mr. Forrester. Tell us what you want. I didn't mean to upset you folks. I just wanted to know who painted the pictures. What pictures? Phyllis, the starscapes. The one I have only has the initials K.I. Karen Isley, so what? Shh, Wayne. I knew her as Jenny Hayden. Get the hell out, Mr. and Mrs. This wait, is wait, my wait, wait, house. Wait, wait. Just out! Go. I don't think that you should get too excited. But Jenny Hayden painted those pictures. And I'm pretty sure the man in there knows where she is. Look, Dad, I still don't understand what we're doing here. Well, I've never eaten in a salad bar before. What's this? A jicama, maybe. Look, Dad, listen to me. Hickam. Mmm. Mmm. It tastes like it sounds. Dad, look, who cares? If there's a guy back there who knows where Mom is, look, why don't why are we camping out on his doorstep? I mean, beating on him until he tells us where she is. I walked in on him and he was getting ready to have dinner. So what? Scott, all life forms need food. That's true all over the universe. When they don't get food, they get nasty and bad-tempered. Those of them that have tempers, anyway. Like Wayne Geffner and me and you. Yeah, but Dad. Hmm. 
I'll try the woman first thing in the morning. She was scared, but I think she felt bad about the way the man treated me. Well, how about taking me along? I mean, if they know that I'm her son, they oh, might... No, we don't know these people, who they are, or what their relationship to Jenny is. Maybe they don't know that she had a son. Yeah, but if we tell them... What if she doesn't want them to know? We have to be careful. Not only for us. We don't know anything about the way Jenny's been living for the past 11 years. What she's been through, what her problems are, what she even remembers. All we know is that she's been living under an assumed name. She might still be in danger. Yeah, I know you're right. But I'm gonna go crazy if I don't do something. All right, I tell you what. You talk to the lady, and I'll keep an eye on the tough guy. Good. You know, there's another thing about food that's true all through the universe. What's that? The stuff that's healthy for you doesn't always taste as good as stuff that's not. You want a bite, right? It's great to have a brother-in-law on the police force. Thanks, Jerry. We'll be talking. Paul Forrester. Bingo. He's heard of him? Ran his name through the computer. Turns out he's from Chicago. Jerry's got a buddy there. Forrester, some kind of hotshot news photographer. He's a reporter? With a reputation for booze, broads, and unpaid bills. And word is he's traveling around with a kid who calls himself Scott Hayden. Scotty, that's Jenny's kid. We don't know that. All we know is a reporter with bills to pay comes sniffing around Jenny Hayden, who's crazier than a loon. But if it is her kid, she's got a right to see him. No! What right? She gave him up. She walked out on him. You weren't there. You didn't hear her. I was being pursued by the government. It was his only chance for a normal life. I'm telling you, I wanted to puke. But what if she's telling the truth? Come on. What if she just thinks she's telling the truth? Wayne, you remember what she was like? When her husband died, she was living up there like a hermit. She didn't care if she was dead or alive. She found out she was pregnant. I mean, she could have been imagining all sorts of things. Wayne, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what I ought to do. I ought to let that slimy reporter do his freak show number on her. On all of us. That woman who says she had a space alien's child, right? Oh, right? Wayne, Wayne! Don't worry, I won't. My sister's screwed up our life enough. Jenny Hayden is not the problem! <laughs> What are you doing? Oh. Oh. I'm hanging out my wash. What does it look like? Listen, mister, please, please. Why? What... Why what? Why are you hanging up your wash? Oh. <laughs> please give me a break. Are you trying to tell me that you're not old enough to remember clothes lines and clothes pins? Sort of. Very clever. Mr. Forrester, 
I'm really sorry for the way that Wayne treated you yesterday. But I can't tell you anything about it. Anyway, I can't. I just can't. I've been looking for Jenny Hayden for a long time. What for? Well, it's complicated, but I left her once, about 15 years ago, and it was a mistake. Mrs. Geffner, what's the matter? <laughs> Wayne says you have her boy. How does he know that? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't, do you? Yes. You are the father, aren't you? <laughs> Jenny's living in northern Arizona, in a little town called Socorro. I don't know exactly where it is, but it's near a big military base. <laughs> she does go by the name Karen Isley. Wayne left this morning for their... Please, Mr. Forrester, go get her before Wayne does, because he's just gonna hide her again. Take your son, her son. Live happily ever after. Is uh, Wayne Geffner around? Nah, he took off this morning. We'll be back for a couple of days. Oh. Do you know where he went? Well, something about family business. Has anybody around here seen a 14-year-old boy with a blue jacket on? I saw him. Here's a ham cheese. He uh, jumped into the back of Geffner's truck. What time? Mm, a little past eight. Thanks. information about a painting. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock sharp, I give out information for free, paintings for prices you wouldn't believe. Well, I can see that you're closing, but this no, is kind Mr. of important. Mr. When I had a place on Madison Avenue, I used to stay open until midnight to make a sale. That's why I came here. Do you know the artist who painted this? Her name is Karen Isley. Who wants to know? Me. I think you'd better come inside.
What do you want Karen for? I like her work. I uh, thought maybe I'd like to buy another one. They're all the same. Well, the theme is the same. Infinity, sort of, but the treatment. They're the same star. It's the same star? Um, I'm an astronomer, I guess. That's why I like her work. Where does she live? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Well, if you tell me where she lives, I'll buy one of her paintings. Mm -hmm. You didn't ask how much. How much? A million dollars. Why? Well, she doesn't sell very many, so I have to charge a lot for each one. Is that a joke? No, Mr. Paul Forrester, you are a joke. Also, the clumsiest lie I have ever met. Now, what do you want with Karen? I knew her a long time ago. Oh, yeah? How long ago? About 15 years. Hmm. What does she look like? She's about your height. Slender, brown hair, blue eyes. A way of tilting her head back like this when she laughs. Okay. When I talk to her, I'll tell her Paul Forrester stopped by. No, no, uh, no. She wouldn't know me by that name. And I look different. Why won't you tell me where she lives? <laughs> you must be kidding. Different name, different appearance. Mister, you sound like an axe murderer who just had a face transplant. But somehow, I don't think you are. I wouldn't hurt her. I think you know that. No, Mr. Paul Forrester, or you'll have me to deal with. She's real fragile. And I have a feeling she's had enough trouble for two lifetimes. I'm not asking for major effect here. A Boy Scout can do this. All right. Pegram's 12 miles out of town on Route 17. About a mile before the entrance, there's a roadhouse called Flaps. Karen hangs out there sometimes. She's got a thing about that base. Have you heard from him yet? What do you mean, he's got your son? Somebody at the job said he got in the back of Wayne's truck. They should be getting to Saguaro pretty soon. Have you found Jenny? Not yet. Well, look, that's where Wayne's heading, too. As soon as you see him, ask him to call me, all right? I will. Goodbye, Phyllis. Well, to you, beautiful lady. Have you, uh, ever been inside Building 11? Yeah, sure, plenty of times, I told you. Yeah, what do they got there? All kinds of stuff about, uh, the flying saucers, you know, UFOs, that kind of thing. Yeah, but, but, but what? I mean, do they have, like, um... Uh, pieces of st uh, spaceships, uh, uh, real physical evidence. Look, it's all a bunch of baloney. No, it's not. I mean, why would they have an official building on, on government installation if, if somebody didn't think it was true? Take it easy, pretty lady. Whatever you say. Excuse me. Now, wait a minute. Where are you going? I don't think you've ever been inside Building 11. Please, let me go. Look, forget all that stuff. Why don't we go back to my place and we hoist a couple of more tall ones, okay? Him. 
He was uh, too hot. Yeah, I guess he was. My name's Paul. Paul Forrester. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to go. Could we talk for a minute? About what? Anything you like. Uh, building 11. You know anything about it? No, but I'd like to. Hi, I'm, I'm Karen Eidsley. Jimmy? Jimmy? Throw me the ball, Jimmy. Atta boy, that's good. <laughs> See, in America, everybody plays ball, so you have to learn. So when you get there, you can play too. Oh, oh, it's too dangerous. Kim? Kim? Stay there. Don't bring him. <laughs> I told you. I told you not to bring him. I told you now. What am I going to do? What's he going to do? Mr. Skeffer, Mr. Skeffer, wake up. Jimmy? Jimmy, I'll come back for you. I promise. You wait here for me. Look, Mr. Skeffer, I got to go get help. Okay, you burn No, don't go. Don't leave me. I miss you. I miss you. Okay, that's oh. right. I'm not going anywhere. It's OK. It's all right. Come on. Come on, lie down. Try and relax. <laughs> Look, if you're going along with the gag, hoping that um, I'll end up going home with you, well, it won't happen. I mean, you can ask Willie, the bartender. I just come here for conversation. I don't live here. What? So it would be hard for you to come home with me. Yes, I guess it would. So, uh, what are you, a, a Trekkie, a science fiction buff, what? I'm sorry? Well, why do you think that there is something out there? I mean, you don't look like the kind of man who's had out-of-body experiences. What makes you so sure? Have you? Well, I think that there are so many billions of stars beyond this solar system that we would have to be incredible egotists to think that our planet is the only one with intelligent life. Yeah, that's what I think. So, tell me about Building 11. <laughs> I'll do more than that. I'll show you. Are you sure you never heard of Pegram? They have a squadron of F-14s and an air transport wing. But right over there, that's Building 11. It's supposed to be hush-hush, but everybody in town knows that it's the National Center for Studying UFOs. Why are you so interested in outer space? Same reason you are, I guess. Is this where you paint? How did you know that? I know who you are. You're Karen Isley. You paint starscapes. I bought one at a gallery in Portland. How did you find me? Through your brother in Albuquerque. Wayne wouldn't have told anybody. Phyllis told me. And you followed me all the way here because of my paintings. They touch me. They make me feel sad and lonesome and happy all at the same time. We'd better go. It's, it's getting late. Can I see you again? No. Why not? Uh, I don't see people. But I've come a very long way. All the way from Portland. 
Yes. I'll be at Laney's gallery in town tomorrow morning. How do you feel? Who are you? Here, this is river water. Should taste pretty good. Do you uh remember anything? Going off the road. Yeah, yeah. The truck caught on fire. I managed to save the thermos and the toolkit, but not much else. You pull me out? Yeah. Can you walk on it? No, I don't think it's broken. But there's no way I can walk the 25 or 30 miles out of here. 30 miles? You lost or something? I was in the back of your truck. Oh, yeah? You gonna tell me who you are? Been in the back of your truck since Albuquerque. Why? I was hoping you'd lead me to my mom. My name's Scott Hayden. Morning, George. Ed? Got your test results. Oh, look, I don't have time for that. You better make time. Serious? I think so. All right. Make yeah. it the short version. OK. Slow down, or you're in trouble. Ed, I didn't ask for advice. I want to know what's in there. Your stomach pains are pre-ulcerous. Your cholesterol is way up, and so are your triglycerides. You are a candidate for everything except elective office. I don't smoke. Congratulations. <laughs> Look, Ed, I told you, I feel like I'm coming down with a little something. It's nothing. Believe me, it's nothing. Just give me my vitamin B12 shot, and I'll be on my way. I got a plane to catch. Why do you do it, George? Is whatever you're after really worth it? Ed, look at it this way. Go back a hundred years or so to the time when the first communist crawled out from under a rock. Now, maybe if somebody like me had been around to hunt him down and to step on him then, we wouldn't be in the fix that we're in today. Now, you tell me, is it worth it? Drop your pants. So, tell me, George, where are you off to today? Albuquerque. I've seen Jenny. I don't know what else to do or where to even look. I had to call the highway patrol. The highway patrol? Why? In, ca in, case, in case they were in some sort of an accident. No. Uh, I'll do that. It's my doorbell. Listen, call me the minute you hear anything. OK, bye. Yes. Mrs. Geffner? Yes. I'm George Fox. I'm with the Federal Security Agency. I'd like to talk to you about your husband. Oh, my God. Has he been in an accident? Well, where is he? He's on his way to Segura, Arizona, I think. Please, just tell me what happened. Mrs. Geffner, as far as I know, your husband is just fine. Thank you very much. 
She wants you to go out to her place. I'll give you some directions. It's a bit tricky to find. All right. What did you do to her? Nothing. Oh, yeah, you quiet ones are dangerous. In the two years she's lived here, nobody but me, but nobody has been to her place. No men. No affairs, no relationships, no flirtations, nada. She's been an emotional recluse. I tell you this to re-emphasize the fact. If you hurt her, I'll cut your throat. Since you said you had traveled so far to find me, I thought you wouldn't mind going a little farther. Is that all right? Yes. It's such a beautiful day, I thought we could take a hike. Right. Hike. I've drawn your picture lots of times. I don't understand. In my mind. Oh, you mean what kind of crazy lady paints the same starscape over and over again? Why do you? I don't know. I guess it's just interesting thinking about something being out there, that's all. Do you ever think about what that something might look like? No. Look, I just can't get this right. Let's move. Wait a minute. Um, tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? The important things. Well, um, I was married once. A long time ago. But, um, he was killed in a car accident. Any children? We had... We had one. But, uh... He doesn't live with me anymore. Uh, could we go? I'm sorry. I don't want to hurt you. All right. Like I said, it was a long time ago. Look, I'll finish this and then I'll take off, all right? I don't think it's a good idea. We wouldn't make it by sundown. I think with a day's rest, I can walk on this leg. We'll try it together. I can't stop you. You want to take off? Go. That's right. I'll stay. You're pretty handy out here. Yeah, well, my dad and I camp out a lot. Your dad. Listen, mister, every time I mention my dad, it's like you'd like to break his jaw or something. If you got something against him, why don't you just say it? <laughs> you don't know. No, I don't know. But you know your mother ran out on you, right? She shouldn't run out on me. She had to give me up. Why? How should I know? I was four years old. But she had a good reason, I know that. Yeah? Well, think about this. Maybe she wouldn't have had such a good reason if your father hadn't run out on her before you were born. You don't know about it. Is this your son? Coffee in a minute. 
Yes. That's Scott. If it causes you so much pain to think of him, why do you keep the picture? Because you still love him. I haven't seen or heard of him in 11 years. But I think about him every day. I look at that picture and I wonder what he looks like now. Whether he's happy, whether he's with people who love him and care about him. This is silly. I'll, I'll, I'll get your coffee. Take that off. Uh, I'm sorry. Th this was a bad idea. Please go. I don't think you want me to. Tell me what I want. Get out. You've been hurt. And you're afraid. Please, go. Now. And don't come back. I, I don't want to see you again. I went to the doctor and a couple of doctors. Believe what I say. I gave you a baby. It will be a boy baby. He will be human. And he will also be my baby. If you do not want this, say so now, and I will stop it.
Radiation alarm. Look at this. High TCR on 617. Damn warning. Give me air suction on the chamber up. I don't believe this. Capsule magnetometer is off scale. So is the V meter. High delta P. What the hell is going on? You heard what happened when 617W hit 15 years ago? Yeah. Well, whatever did it then is back. Gentlemen, you are exactly right. Paul? A long time ago, I let someone go because I had to. And I have never gotten over him. Paul, I don't know anything about you except your name and that you like my paintings. I haven't felt like this since then. Please stay with me. 